beginning of the experiment, which is indicative of the material being in a liquid state. Then, starting at, starting at about 140 degrees centigrade, which I have indicated on this slide at the beginning of the reaction, E prime abruptly begins to increase and it reaches a plateau value at about 180 degrees centigrade, corresponding to the end of the reaction on this particular slide. From the data on this slide, you can see that the increase in E prime, which is observed, is due to a chemical reaction, which in this case is known as gelation, that, that is a reaction that begins to create the three-dimensional cross-link network in this particular polymeric material. Next slide, please. Now let's talk about some correlation of DMA data to other more traditional physical properties of polymers. Next slide, please. Here again, here once again, is a, is a typical DMA plot from the polymer literature. As I had mentioned already, there is more than one way to discuss TG from, from data such as these. One way is to use the peak in tangent delta. On this particular slide, the peak in tangent delta is noted at 107.6 degrees centigrade. However, in my own personal experience, another more useful way to define TG in terms of the actual polymer mechanical properties is to use the decrease in E prime, which in this particular slide is observed beginning at 91.0 degrees centigrade. A quantitative and reproducible value for the temperature at which E prime begins to decrease can definitely be determined from the analysis which is shown on this slide. The analysis which is shown on this slide involves reading E prime data to, to lines before the transition and during the transition and after the transition and determining the intersection points of the various lines. Next slide, please. Now, I would like to discuss a brief case study that I was involved with that utilizes the type of information that, that I was talking about on the previous slide. A company that I was working with had obtained a request from one of their customers for a material that has an HDT value of greater than 100 degrees centigrade. However, unfortunately for them, the company did not have an HDT testing unit, but they did have access to a DMA testing unit. They wanted to know, and it was the purpose of them contacting me, they wanted to be able to know how to relate their DMA test results to HDT values. Previously, they had not been successful in, with any of their attempts. It is possible, as I, as I showed on the last slide, to use the decrease in E prime as a measure of the TG, and that value correlates very, very well with measured HDT values. This in general means that for new development resins, a, a single DMA scan and subsequent analysis of E prime data can be used to quickly provide estimates of HDT values. Using this particular approach, the company was able to quickly screen new resin formulations and meet the HDT value greater than 100 degrees, the HDT value greater than 100 degrees centigrade that, that was needed their particular customer. However, after having provided that analysis, it certainly does need to be noted that the particular correlation that I'm talking about between TG and HDT is strictly valid only for amorphous polymers. A further discussion of semi-crystalline polymers will be provided in several slides. Next slide, please. Here is the analysis done on the DMA data that we have seen before. It can be seen that by performing the, the proposed analysis, 
that the HDT value for this polymer is estimated to be 91 degrees centigrade. Note that this is about 17 degrees C lower than the TG value obtained from the tangent delta P. And what I'm referring to there is, is the E prime data indicates a decrease beginning at about 91 degrees centigrade, whereas the tangent delta peak is at, a, is at approximately 108 degrees centigrade. Next slide, please. This slide contains data from the polymer literature relating HDT versus TG for some common amorphous polymers. In the case of these data, TG has been defined by the peak in tan delta, not from the E prime changes. You can certainly see from the straight line analysis which is performed of the, from the data on this slide that there's a very good correlation between the TG that is measured by DMA and the HDT values that have been measured for these various amorphous polymers. However, while there is a good correlation between the two parameters, as can, as can clearly be seen from the data on this slide, it does need to be noted that the TG values are higher than the HDT values. In my opinion, this further reinforces the recommendation for using the decrease in E prime as a general predictor of HDT values. Next slide, please. Here is an E prime plot versus temperature for a semi-crystalline polymer rather than an amorphous polymer. To determine an HDT value for this type of material, the e